On the last days of her life, my grandmother rested in her bed with this playing, very quietly next to her head. It's a recording of an old Buddhist chant, and it's the last thing I remember her listening to before she passed away. It's also the one thing I made sure to take from her house before we emptied it and put it up for sale, which was hard. I was close to my grandparents. They took care of me for a lot of my life. But it also made me think about what it was like growing up in that house. Living in the San Francisco Bay Area, I grew up listening to this music, to this Buddhist chant, among other songs from Chinese culture. In the same way that it was weird to bring authentic Chinese food to school, and I never wanted to because my friends would look at me funny, it was just as weird to be at my grandparents' house and hear Chinese opera. Which, if you've heard, it feels kind of silly and kind of annoying if it's at full volume at 9 a.m. Uh, on a Saturday or what you know whatever the case is. But that influenced me way more than I thought it would. Identity's always been a big thing for me. My mom is Chinese, my dad's Peruvian, but growing up in the U.S., being in California, I always thought. I'm just 100% American, and I'm always going to identify as 100% American. And it wasn't until my grandparents got sick that I started to take an earnest look at my Chinese culture. I believe that identity is such a huge part of people's lives. It can lead to self-confidence and self-actualization, but I also believe that not knowing oneself, one's culture and mental states, one's identity, can lead us down the wrong path. Not understanding ourselves means living in ignorance, and having ignorance means we're making fear-based decisions, rather than making decisions that are good, decisions that are right for you and the world around you. And I believe that Shang Chi and Shang Chi's story is about finding oneself and finding out one's true identity. My name's Daniel Chalitza, and here's my vision for the music of Shang Chi. I want to pull from the familiar Asian epics I grew up with, movies like Spirited Away and Princess Mononoke, which have themes of finding one's place in the world, of being an unlikely hero because the world around you demands it. But I also want to have fun. I want to inject the fun of a movie like Kung Fu Hustle. I also want to do brand new things. But maybe packaged in familiar ways, which is why I'm looking towards the Joker's theme in Nolan's *The Dark Knight*. For both the Mandarin and his Ten Rings group, I want to be subtle. I want to play with chimes and bells and other kinds of metals, and I want it so that every time the audience hears metal, they know it's bad news. You know. I also thought it'd be interesting to give the Ten Rings literally ten rings of a melody. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten rings. So we heard Chinese opera earlier, and I wanted to explore this vibe. In Chinese culture, Chinese opera was a way to tell stories about legends, myths, heroes, and gods. Throughout the MCU history, we've been hinting at the Mandarin and the large influence the Ten Rings has over the world, right? They're kind of legendary and certainly mysterious, and I thought we could try telling their story through Chinese opera. In Mandarin, he's asking the question, "Do you know who I am?" And wouldn't it be interesting to reference this idea as we learn more about the Mandarin and the Ten Rings? Wouldn't it be interesting to hear the might of the Ten Rings terrorist group as they reveal themselves to our audience? <laughs> Shang Chi was raised to be an assassin and live a life of crime, and it wasn't until he started to learn more about his past and about the world around him. That things started to turn around for him. I feel like that's when he gets to hone his true powers, and that's what the music can do. I think we can have themes of "This is who I am right now" that grow into "Who do I want to be?" 
which would finally evolve into, I know who I am, I know what I want to be, and here's what I'm going to do about it. And that's when we get to hear his true self shine. Ultimately, Shang-Chi's power in the long term is not his mastery of the martial arts. His ultimate power is that he makes the decision to no longer be an assassin and to transform himself so that he uses his extraordinary abilities for good. Shang-Chi's greatest power is his ability to choose who he wants to be, his identity. Back when I was a little boy, my grandmother constantly taught me that kindness was the absolute most important thing in life. Consistently choosing to be kind and helpful are life-changing decisions. And when Shang-Chi decides to be good, that's when we see his true powers his true heroism. My name's Daniel, and I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope it shed some light on what we could explore for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And I'd be so happy to talk more about this with you. Thank you so very much for your time. I really, really do appreciate it.